Um, okay, so this is a 69-year-old man that came from the west coast of Florida. He, uh, he's a rough man. He uh, hunts uh, Burmese uh, pythons in the Everglades. Uh, the cabbage <laughs> 10 years ago, uh, he was admitted uh, for unstable angina. Um, he had uh, preserved uh, ejection fraction, moderate aortic stenosis, and um, they felt that um, they, you know, they, they, would, they prefer that we take care of this patient. As you can see, the EKG is unremarkable. He has um, preserved ejection fraction, and the valve varies is around 1.5. So <clears throat> this is a baseline cath that uh, they usually send me the pictures uh, over the iPhone. I take the patient, and then they come with a CD. Um, so you can see that there's um, there's a left main here, uh, left main stenosis there, and then there's a ramus. I think it's a ramus and the circumflex because the LED is uh, occluded. Then one that's one graft, that's the other graft that uh, are occluded. Then <coughs> this is the the right. I mean it's hard to see there, but the right has a very very tight uh, lesion there that is very calcified in, in the ostium. And they could barely engage there with um, with an amplat catheter. So this is uh, this is the other view of the right, and you can see the calcium, big big chunk of calcium in its origin. This is a lima that goes to the LED. Um, so and this is again the ventricle. So we decided to take him, uh, and we decided that well, we're going to do it radially, um, just because we can. So, <laughs> and to show off a little bit, I mean, if you can't do it, we'll just, you know, just bring him here and we'll do him radially for better patient comfort and outcome. So we decided to develop a plan uh, as in uh, these complex cases. So right radial axis, 76 cylinder glide sheet, use a seven French uh, AL1. For the osteal right, use a rotolator plus a DES, um, then use, uh, use the left main bifurcation, use a seven French EVU, one stent directed into the ramus because that's a straight shot, and then the circumflex uh, doesn't seem to have much disease in the osteum, so everything, uh, everything is set. So we went in, you can see how the, mm. the, the tip of the catheter is almost constrained mm. there, I mean, and you can see the, you can see the contrast going and, and, and I'm barely feeling that right corner. So this is what we decided to do. I, I, I don't know, I'm not very aggressive with uh, rotablator. I usually do one five, modify the plug enough so I can dilate it and then can move on. And I usually try to use imaging. In these cases, just make sure that the stent is well expanded. Then we do further lesion preparation. I like to use the angioscope. Then I continue to work on that. And we use a non-compliant 30 by 25. And then we have this. The plans now have changed. So there is one thing that is positive about this picture, uh, among all the negative, um, and it's that I still have a wire. So the one thing you don't want to do here is by accident pull the wire. Don't get too nervous. Just keep, keep doing what you're supposed to do. Keep a cool head and, 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 have, and develop a plan. So in this case, uh, the patient, uh, he's very resilient. He started to say, well, I have some pressure in my chest, and the STs were like off the roof in the monitor. And so we went in and... So what's your, what's your diagnosis? Is this... Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't say what the diagnosis is. What is this? So that everybody understands what we're talking about. Well, I mean, you tell me. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I didn't say the diagnosis, but uh, you are absolutely right. We, I think it's a point to discuss. Yeah, I, and I think that, uh, I think it's a, it's a massive dissection. And deep wall dissection. Yeah, yeah, deep wall dissection. This is not, a, this is not a perforation. Yeah. So there is no free, there's no need to get an echo. So people get immediately deep wall, I need a bedside echo. There is no need for an echo. Correct. And there's no free flow of contrast. So what's the next step? Then? The other key thing to make sure is that the aorta is not affected. It looks like the aorta is not affected, so it's about three or four that's, that, that's, I mean, that's happened before. Yeah, yes. Harry, that, I was going to say, that, that's the second good thing with having a wire down is that it doesn't, it, it's not an osteal involvement so, of the aorta. So what's the next step? So, 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 so I guess she's going to Stop injecting, injecting. You. okay. So, so we know it's a big dissection. Stop so injecting is The great dissection thing. is from... The rotoblader followed by a 3-0 balloon, or is it a guide mm -hmm. catheter dissection from uh, injection, maybe in an area that's uh, uh, unraveled? I mean, maybe both. No, uh, I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's aggressive. It's all of the above. 
I don't think it's a rot of later. I don't think it's a rot of later. Right. I think it was very, very uh, aggressive balloon inflations uh, at very high pressures. So, so that I, was one of the comments I, I was think going I, to I make. probably ripped off the calcium there right. and then got the plaque loose. And then when I injected, that's that's what I got. Why not rot of later? Because over the calcium, we don't know if we're XZ or not. So that's one of the things that could happen. Well, I can tell you that uh, I didn't show you the picture after the rotolator, but after the rotolator, the pictures looked okay. Look, it was okay. after the balloons it, that this I mean, is happening. To your point, at this juncture, you've used a, a you know scoring balloon, a rotolator, a high pressure NC balloon. It, it doesn't really matter. The, yeah. The, and the, an aggressive it, guide. Yeah, and, a, and an aggressive guide that's associated with dissections, and this happens to start very right. close to where so, the So I guess my question would be, before we move on to how to treat it, is how often do you do... Uh, Appropriate to do a 3.0 non-compliant balloon here before putting a stent because that's always the risk in these osteoarthritis. Or, or potentially, but well, some need, kind I mean, of you, 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 the, the most pressing, the most pressing need here is to restore flow. Sure. The patient is getting yeah. unstable, no, no, and if you don't, before. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. oh, before. Well, I don't think I could pass. Uh, I could pass the. So I don't think I could pass the stent. Yeah, the, fair enough. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't think I was going to be able to. First of all, uh, expand the stent, and I don't think I was going to be able to pass the IVUS. I already knew what the IVUS was going to show anyway, sure. mm -hmm. and the IVUS would, would be just for stent optimization in that I, case. I guess I, I think the, the, maybe the point is that being less aggressive up front and then trying an imaging modality first, you know, may might, might be an approach and could keep Correct. you out of, out of this trouble. But to be honest, yeah, but a 3 was, was not, was not like, he wasn't, yeah. it's not a 4 but the yeah. best of us clearly at least. It's, it's, it's a big risk. Yeah. Yeah. So, three of balloons was a very reasonable choice. So, now, what, what do you, how are you okay, going to Okay, so what's the now? next step then? A balloon and the guideline. So, what I, so my best next step was, for me at least, was to restore flow. And the best way to restore flow in the dissection is just to tuck it with a stent. Mm -hmm. So, that's what I did. And uh, so, I advanced, um, I first, uh, I mean, to be honest here, I mean, that was not my first thing. I, I ballooned it a little bit more distally. And, and, then I, and then I got a stent, a 3.5 uh, by 38, but that's the furthest the stent would go. I could mm -hmm. not get it past that point. Um, I'm glad that so, it was so not you trying to put the, the stent order. more distal, right hmm? where the marginal comes off, or are you trying to put the stent right where the dissection is? I wanted to go as far distal as I could, so I would prevent yeah. the hematoma from continuing to progress. But I could not get the balloon. Uh, I could not get the stent any further than that because of the angle, because of the calcification, and you can see that the vessel is not straight. But were you going to target right where the mar acute marginal comes off, RV, RV branch? Uh, I was going to, yes, probably a little bit below there. Mm -hmm probably a little bit below there where the hematoma stops. And then you don't want to be injecting because that's uh, what happens. The hematoma continues to progress. So now I, I put the stent. Actually, in some ways, I kind of like this yeah, because what it does is you prevent proximal extension yeah, to the as yeah, well. Yeah. And as you're injecting, uh, correct. you kind of uh, make that. So now you have... The old paradigm of not stenting proximal is no longer applicable with guidelines. Right. right. So and I the newer generation easy. stents, are, I think, are more deliverable. You know, we've learned a lot more about body wires and things. But I think with that 38, you would have been stenting the proximal aspect directly into the dissection. It, you know, it never would have been long enough to cover where you wanted to get Correct. to and the inflow of this. So, so I'm here now. Yeah. I cannot advance anything else. Um, so the dissection is sealed. Uh, the SDs are coming down. The patient is still complaining of a little bit of chest pain. But I have, you can see that this is not a new lesion. This is just a hematoma in the wall of a vessel that is mm -hmm. compressing the lumen. So we decided to uh, go to the other techniques that we know. So we inflated the balloon and we used uh, the balloon anchoring technique. So a 3.5 by 10 U4 balloon. Then we advanced the guideliner. Uh, after that, uh, the delivery of the stent, um, I think it was another 3.5 by 22 or so. And, uh, and I didn't think that I needed to really overlap the two stents because uh, the vessel was relatively healthy in between, and I was not worried that that, I mean, the vessel is big enough to be worried about the wrist stenosis, so we retracted the, the guideliner. So this is a nice demonstration of that technique, especially for the fellows, the balloon anchoring technique and advancing the, the guideliner. You have to have everything ready because you get ischemic, uh, you get ischemia if, uh, sometimes with the guideliner across. Lesions, so we deployed the 3.5 by 22 uh, resolute. In that situation, then the flow was restored. Now um, we can breathe. Uh, <laughs> Did you guys IVUS this at any point? Uh, to try yeah. to determine so, where you were normal? Because that's one of the challenges, is oftentimes you just keep toothpasting 
this intramural hematoma. Correct. And I, I personally, I mean, not be, so I did. I was, uh, uh, so, so at this point, this, this was a point where we wanted to, because now you worry about about this lesion here. Now mm -hmm. you worry about the lesion. You want to make sure that you expand it, that you don't have an underexpanded stent, and that you have uh, covered the ostium. So we did IVUS imaging. So here you have, this is uh, at the distal stent. Uh, we, we went all the way down here, so there was no extra, there was no mirror hematoma. This stent was well opposed. It was an interval free of stent that had uh, no hematoma in the wall that actually is reflecting what the, what the angiogram says. Then we have a little bit of a compressed uh, stent more proximally, and then right at the ostium, there's no stent. <laughs> So <clears throat> then we decided to, well, it's uh, time to do another stent. So we advanced at 3, 5 by 9, a resolute. And now, you know, we knew it was a stepwise approach. The complication had happened. Now you have to cool uh, your mind and, you, you know, you just need to develop your steps and the plans. So we, we, put, a, we put a cover, we covered the, the Austell RCA with, uh, with another stent, 3, 5 by 9. Uh, we further expanded that and that, and then we started to pat ourselves in the back with my, with my fellow. Then we did IVUS again, and uh, I think it looks okay. The ostium is covered. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, uh, we were happy. So then I said, well, why not? Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my Russian fellow was in his last month of uh, fellowship, and he wanted uh, all the experience he could go, uh, he could get, and he was very, very encouraging. So, that's, uh, <laughs> which is exactly, and, and it's so it's it's so difficult to convince me, as you can see, that I said, well, okay, let's go. We have access. We're here. He's already anticoagulated. He's stable. So let's move on. Don't mind the 300 yeah. <laughs> uh, well, by now we have uh, about. 150 of contrast yeah. or so. Um, so we IVUS uh, that, and you can see that there's an area that is slit-like. Even though you cannot mm -hmm. see it here, you can see it better in the diagnostic pictures, but that left main, distal left main, has an area that is like, a, you know, it's like a slit, like a slit occlusion. So let, let's uh, let's do it. So we were the, what, I don't know if that's in Ramos or an LED, but we wired that, and uh, we put two different wires. Uh, we put the pro water in the circumflex, uh, and the BMW in the Ramos. We used uh, the angioscope, uh, the same we had used in the, in the RCA. Um, things were looking good there, so we decided to go with the stent, provisional stenting as planned. I think the circumflex looks okay, 3, 5 by 12, a simple case. Uh, then we deploy the stent, and now we wanted to do a little bit of uh, proximal optimization. We wanted to rewire and perhaps uh, go through the go through the side. So we're looking good. Uh, the circumflex is, is fine. That uh, Ramos uh, slash LAD is looking. Actually, it's an LAD. It's a proximal LAD that gives a big diagonal. is is doing is doing great. And you can see here we swap the wires. Now the BMW that has a, the the little marker is in the circumflex, and then. Uh, the other wire is in the in the LED, so everything is going is going as planned. So um, then, when we advance a balloon, we advance a 40 by 12. Then my fellow says, you know, he's a big guy, Russian, and I says, uh, I'm having some difficulties, but don't worry, I get it, I get it through. So, <laughs> so he got it through, <laughs> and so we we. We were able to optimize, to do the proximal optimization of that uh, stent. Um, and, uh, so, and then we decided to go ahead and do IVUS. So we do IVUS. And then you can see that the stent is well opposed there in the LED. Here the, you can see the wire coming in uh, from the circumflex. And now I hope that you're going to be able to tell me uh, everything's looking good, looking good, looking good. Is that still looking good? <laughs> Uh, I can repeat that, or I can show you this picture here, um, and uh, there is the answer. So in the proximal part of the left main, and this is why the fellow felt resistance while advancing the balloon, you can see that when we rewired the, la the LAD, we actually didn't wire through the stent. It went through the side and then, uh, and then into the LAD. So part of the stent is well opposed, but then the proximal, the proximal part of the stent in the left main is crushed to the mm -hmm. side. So that's it. That's it. You know, that's the second save of this case, hopefully. <laughs> and one thing that is very that is very nice about this 
is that if you, if you look carefully, you can still see that there's a wire through the lumen of a vessel going into the circuit. So that was um, our lifeline because getting, I mean, saving this situation without, uh, without the wire through the true lumen would be very, very difficult. It's just very difficult to see. So we went ahead and inflated two five U4 balloon into that, uh, into that uh, through the, the, the wire in the circ just to expand the proximal part of the stent. Then that was easy. We rewired again, uh, rewired the LED and expanded the stent now uh, to a 40 by 12. And we were feeling confident. Um, then these are the final pictures. And here is the IVUS, and you can see now that uh, the, you can see there the polygon of confluence, and you can see that the stent is well opposed uh, to the wall all the way to, to the ostium. So the polygon of confluence looks actually very nice and, and well expanded. I don't have the measures here. Um, but um, I think in, in, in globally was safe, uh, safe times two in this case. Um, you know, you always have to, to develop a primary plan, but things can always change along the way. Uh, if you're going to do calcified lesions and complex PCA, I think imaging uh, is very, very important. I think helped us a great deal. Always come up with alternative plans and always uh, learn during the fellowship uh, how to get out of travel, come to CVI. Uh, to learn more about uh, how to get yourself out of trouble <laughs> and always be creative. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask one quick question, Mauricio. Did you think about orbital atherectomy? Uh, I don't have the... it in my, I, I could have, but I don't have it in my hospital. We just uh, have the rotational atherectomy. Okay, great.